Hi, I just wanted to talk to you about the 50mm anamorphic lens which was released by Chinese company Great Joy last year. Um, it's a really cool, really exciting lens. Um, I picked it up a few months back and I'm really excited about it. So to give you a bit of context, I shoot a lot of corporate videos, business, promotional films, things like that. And I shoot on the Ursa Mini Pro and the Blackmagic 6K Pro. I've shot with the Ursa Mini Pro for about five years, so I'm kind of used to the Super 35 sensors type. Um, and when I was looking to buy an anamorphic lens, which I wanted for a while, it was quite tricky to find somebody who'd shot on a Super 35 sensor and talk specifically about what kind of crop ratio you get and things like that. So I just wanted to make a little video, just talk a little bit about the lens itself, but also give you a little guide as to how you get that footage into Premiere and how you get it to a kind of more acceptable 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. So I think when you've acquired lenses and things like that, um, one of the things that you always dream about is having an anamorphic lens. Um, I know that I've shot lots of films in the past where we've used you know, regular kind of stills, spherical lenses and things like that. Um, and they're all amazing for the film and you get really, really nice looks from, from them. But there's something about an anamorphic lens that just gives you a look that's kind of nostalgic to me, I think, because a lot of films from 70s, 80s, 90s as well were, were shot with these anamorphic lenses. So I've looked for a while at lenses that would hopefully take that box and shooting on a Ursa Mini Pro and a 6K um, EF mount um, and to find something that covers Super 35 and full frame that's EF mount. The Great Joy one really appealed to me because it was the first time that I'd seen a lens come out that it was a decent price that also had that native EF mount so I knew I could just stick it on my cameras and you know going forward if I got a new camera or a mirrorless camera I can adapt it and so on and where that's if, if I went for a mirrorless uh, lens I'd be, I'd be kind of limited as to what I could use it on. Um, so that, that was really the main reason why I chose the Great Joy lens. So with the Great Joy lens you get different options. You can choose obviously the different lens mounts and things like that, um, which you know are all available on their website, I'm not going to read them out to you. Um, but you can get a blue version and a gold version and basically all that does is dictate what colour the lens flares are. Um, so blue you get this blue flare and gold, obviously a gold flare. Um, and I think when I was looking at them the thing that I actually don't like about anamorphic lenses is the flares. Um, they're really distracting, I know they can be really distracting, um, and I find that they kind of get in the way of the footage, uh, which isn't brilliant. And I've noticed a few people when they shoot on anamorphic lenses on, on YouTube or even in films, I mean, we've got JJ Abrams as the, kind of the master of this, but the screens are washed with anamorphic flares, and they're kind of there for the sake of it. Um, where if you watch an actual film, you know, something like Die Hard that was shot anamorphic, you've got the flares and stuff there, but they're not prominent, they're not in your face, they're not all the time. They just they just feel more natural. Um, and when I was looking at the different options that you could get with Great Joy, they have the, the gold version and the blue version. Looking at footage, the gold versions, it, it seems that the flare was much more subtle. Um, the colour doesn't clash as much with footage because I find that gold and, you know, warmer colours tend to be when I'm shooting business promotion and corporate and things like that. It's, it's kind of warmer tones. Um, so I felt that if I went for that version, the gold flares are going to blend in a little bit more with my footage and not really stand out as, as noticeable. Um, and I have to say that's what I found when I've been using it. Um, I feel that the gold version is for me definitely the best route to go. So, so far I've shot uh, one corporate video on it and I've also taken it out at night for a walk and just shot some sort of low light stuff on the 6k. Um, the video that I shot just before Christmas it was, um, I shot that all just on this lens so I constrained myself to doing this lens and that involved using it as a run and gun lens really. Um, so there was a few interviews that I shot which was really really nice to be able to frame these really nice wide shots and shooting b-roll and things like that with it. It was, it was interesting, I was having to think a lot more than I usually do when I'm on my kind of Sigma 18 to 35 or even a standard 50mm. I was having to really think and compose and shots and move myself around a lot which was which was cool. It's a good, it was a good challenge um, but I'll get into that in a minute about it might not be an ideal running gun lens. Basically it was a kind of a low light natural light situation where we were using available light, we were filming in a food bank um, and we're filming in a business and I was experimenting a lot with the lights. So I was putting, you know, people near natural light and I was also putting physical lights in because it was Christmas. There was a lot of twinkly lights around. So I was framing light in shot near to the lens and further away from the subject to really experiment and see 
what the squeezing look like and what the boca look like and all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, I was I was pleasantly surprised. It, it's I wouldn't say surprised. I think it, it's it was as expected. So I got the look that I was wanting from the lens, which is you know that's that's why I purchased it. So very very happy with that. Um, it does make things pop. It makes subject pop out. Um, character wise, I think there's enough going on in the background. It's it's like f. 2.9 or T 2.9 which I, I assume is at like f 2.8 and um, so it's not you know crazy huge bokeh but it's 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 kind of perfect if that makes sense it's it stretches the image out enough for it to have the anamorphic effect and what's better is obviously you're getting that much wider aspect ratio which is which is you know that, that's that's why I purchased the lens really um there are issues with using it um as a one-man band um the focus throw is absolutely ginormous so to focus on something at the other side of the room to pull focus to something near you near the camera and i mean that that focus throw is excellent for being able to be more precise with the focus um the other thing that didn't really help with the focus is when i'm shooting it on ursa or i was shooting on my 6k um you can only preview the anamorphic back with a two times squeeze or a 1.3 times squeeze but the lens itself was 1.8 so it wasn't quite perfect so for me, I shoot everything pretty much HD, deliveries all HD. I very rarely get asked to do stuff in 4K. Um, and what I found is because of the crop factor of the Super 35, this is your image on full frame. Um, and when you crop in on a Super 35 sensor, you're losing data on the left and right, but also the top and bottom. Um, and what you end up with essentially is like, I think it's like 3.5 to one or something, just this ridiculously long image. So if you wanted to put that to a more usable 235 or 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio, you're taking that into Premiere and you're cropping the sides off even more. Which, it's, it's a bit strange for me to get my head around. I don't actually mind losing the data on the side because you can frame for the middle 235. So that's not a problem at all. It's just, it's an extra step to think about when, you, when you're framing your shots and when you're composing shots and stuff. And again, I think with using this for a run and gun lens, this is one of the issues that you're going to get into is that you've got to do a lot more thinking when you're using it than what you would do if you were in a, a studio or in a controlled environment where you'd have your shots mapped out and you could see exactly what you were getting and you could nail it. Now for me one of the things before I bought this lens or at least when I ordered it and I was waiting for it to arrive was how am I going to get this footage into Premiere and be able to get a nice 1080 235 image. Um, what's the stretches that I'm going to have to do? Am I going to have to shoot 4K to give me that extra width that I can then crop to 235? What I'd rather do is shoot with a full sensor and then crop afterwards. So yeah, for me, the big question was whether when I take the footage into Premiere, if I've shot in 4K, will that crop nicely 235 to 1080? Or if I shoot 4.6K or 6K on my, on my, on my pocket, um, would that give me enough wiggle room to shoot in 4K? And the short answer is if you're shooting in 6K, on the Blackmagic 6K, you can crop the sides, get a 235 image at 4K resolution, so that works. And if you shoot 4K on the Ursa Mini Pro and you want to get a 2K image that's in 235, that's that's all fine. So if, if that's what you're trying to do, if you want to deliver one of those formats, then you're all right with that. Um, but I'll, I'll talk you through a little bit now, the kind of de-squeeze process that I used in Premiere and hopefully that's quite useful. Right, so I'm going to show you how to get a, um, footage from the Ursa, which I shot at 4K, um, so you can see 3840, 2160, so UHD, how to get that to look like 235 um, in a 1080 frame. So what I'm gonna do is drop it onto a new sequence in Premiere. You see we've got a 169 image here, and we've got a 169 sequence. So if you look at your sequence, 3840, 2160. So what I wanna do is 1920 by 1080. So that's gonna give me my 1080 frame, yep. And there we go, he's cropped in. And then what you're going to do, you're going to uncheck a uniform scale and that lets you adjust the height and the width independently of each other. Uh, now, I, you can do a bit of calculating yourself, but what I found was for height, you want to be looking at 38 and for width, you want to be looking at 68. Now, you've lost a lot there. If you're looking left and right, you, you've lost a lot of information either side. However, that is a perfect 235 crop um, so therefore that for me is a much more usable aspect ratio so I've got my camera assistant here who's shooting some b-roll of me you can see that's pretty much spot on 235 
so overall so far i think it's a brilliant lens i'm absolutely in love with it i just want it on my camera all the time um i've been shooting a lot of video with it but i've also been shooting a lot of stills with it um it's great because when you shoot stills when you de-squeeze it it's naturally 2.35 to 1 so you get a really nice cinematic look there's a few images on screen now that are snapped with my a7 III um it's a full frame camera and you can see they're all in 235 they're all really really nice um i mean you know they're not the most ambitious images or the most you know fantastic photography but you, you get an idea that you know these are nice big 235 cinematic pictures so even just using it as a stills camera it's an absolute joy um, i'm really looking forward to getting out there and shooting my first film on it which i've got in the next two months which is going to be amazing it's about a killer badger what's not to like um and yeah, so I'm going to use this for select corporate projects, I think, um, even crop into 16.9, but just, you know, using the um, the kind of the flares and the, the stretched look and stuff like that. I think that's going to lift a lot of the videos that I'm doing. I think my clients will really enjoy seeing the more cinematic presentation as well. Um, although it might be subconscious, they will pick up on it. And again, a 1.8, two times lens, it's, you're getting that anamorphic look massively. You're getting what you pay for, really. Um, and I think the great joy one is an absolute beautiful lens to start with. I think um, I really, really want to look at getting the 35mm. I also want to have a look at getting the 85mm, which they just released. I think as a set of anamorphic primes created for cinema cameras, those three lenses are just, they're just absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to get, get hold of one of the, <laughs> the other ones. It might be a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, hopefully this is this has helped. If you're thinking about an anamorphic lens and you want to choose, you've got a similar camera to me, hopefully I'll give you enough information, the sort of stuff that I couldn't find when I was looking to buy this lens um, so hopefully it's, it's useful for you um, if you do have any comments or questions or anything just drop them below i, I do respond to everything um, and I'll, I'll try and answer any questions and film little tests and stuff if you need anything um, and hopefully the next lens review you see will be one of those other ones although uh, it might be a while <laughs> so thanks very much for watching bye bye